Let's begin by opening Photoshop and the template that you'd like to use. Most DLC and some workshop items will download templates directly to this location. Locate the folder with the vehicle name you're looking for. Notice that there are other alternate vehicle files in there, such as Windows Out. Some workshop items will include the template files in the description. Mods located on websites and cloud drives may include the template files alongside the download folders. And when in doubt, you can always Google for the template files. When all else fails, you can always open the team's mass file for the installed vehicle in order to create a template on your own. To do this, open the mass utility located here. Then navigate to your R-Factor 2 installed vehicles folders and locate the vehicle you're looking for. Then drag and drop the teams.mass file into the mass utility. You can then extract each individual file or select all and extract them together into a new folder. You can then double click on one of the vehicle DDS files and it should open directly into Photoshop. And just click OK on the pop-up. While this DDS file does not have any wireframe or other guiding layers, it will at least show you where vehicle elements are so you can paint over top of them using new layers. There are several important layers and layer groups that you should have within the template file. A mask layer is there to help silhouette the body panels and shapes of the car. A wireframe layer identifies the actual 3D mesh used within the sim. The six region layers are grouped together each one specifically colored to be identified within R-Factor 2. The region layers will be used to link specific materials while using the showroom on the final edit of the car. You should never change the colors of these layers, but instead use masks to manipulate them. The next and one of the most important layers is the albedo layer, also known as a clamp layer, and may be identified as such in older content. These layers or layer groups typically are level layers, and what they do is they cap or limit the upper end of the color spectrum. The color spectrum or color gamut used within R-Factor 2 is actually capped for bright white at 220 out of 255. These values may not mean much to you, but just understand that R-Factor 2 is basically compressing the way that the colors appear in order to recreate different types of lighting scenarios. For instance, if you were to use an entirely white car at 255 instead of 220, it will appear as though it's glowing bright white. Or, if you're using a color on that layer, it will appear as though that color is phosphorescent or neon and almost glowing. You will also find parts layers as well as carbon fiber layers. Parts layers typically include elements on the cars that would be the same color car to car, such as tow hooks, windshield wipers, and other elements. The carbon fiber layer functions in much the same way, although this can be manipulated quite a bit more or turned off completely, depending on what you're going for for the final result. Finally, towards the bottom is the paint layer or the painting groups. This is where you'll actually color on your livery. Please note that on some older templates and some modern ones, there may be included a shading layer. This layer bakes in shadows on the car and accents certain geometries within the car's body shape. If the mod is using more modern PBR materials, this shading layer probably isn't necessary, but feel free to turn it on or off at your own discretion. In addition to layers, Photoshop also has color and alpha channels. Most notably is the alpha channel, which R-Factor 2 has historically used to identify specular intensity. This basically controls the amount of glossiness that the paint job will have. By either making it completely black or completely white, it can go from completely shiny to completely matte. Newer shaders may overwrite this, but keep this in mind as this will affect various parts of the car during the livery painting process. Before you begin, be sure to save your template as a completely new file somewhere else other than the original template folder. This will ensure that you do not overwrite the original template file. I strongly recommend adding any number plates or series specific elements that are required for league races first. Because some of these elements may require specific placement on the car, you want to put them there first before designing different elements around them on the base livery. We can now begin making our livery base. Using non-destructive tools such as the pen tool or any shape tool, when the base is complete, we can then begin adding sponsor decals. With our sponsors added, we can now go back and make any final adjustments to our livery. For instance, let's make this green pop a bit more. Notice that when I choose this bright green, it does not look as bright as the green in my selection window. This is because of the albedo layer. If we want to make this green appear to glow neon, 
we can simply add a mask to the albedo layer. We will now want to create our region material mapping. This can be done by copying the layers that we want to have the same material properties and flattening them into a single layer. And then using the selection tool to select and then invert that selection. We can now apply this selection as a mask to whichever region layer we'd like. Repeat this for as many region layers as you wish. Note that for R Factor 2, only the black layer can have metallic properties, such as chrome or metallic paint flex. We are now ready to export our templates. Disable your wire layer as well as any other layers you do not wish to be visible. Now go to File, Save As, and change the file type to DDS. If you do not have this file type as an option, you may have to download the plugin direct from NVIDIA, link in the description. Now use a unique file name starting with Alt. The part after Alt can be anything you want as long as it's only 13 characters max. For example, alt 13 tnadsdds Do not include any spaces or underscores. Never name your file just alt.dds, as this will cause issues with server files. On the plugin menu, select DXT5 as the option. Now we will export our region maps. Make sure that layer group is visible, and ensure that no other layers are visible above it. Then go to File, Save As, and select DDS as your file type. Use the same file name as we just did, but add an underscore region as the suffix. Some mods have additional templates for extra components on the cars. Windshield templates are the most common, although rims, wings, and other components may be available as well. Window and windscreen templates are unique because they utilize the alpha channel to create transparencies. Windows are obviously transparent so drivers can see through, but you can affect the shading or tinting from both the inside and the outside. The most common usage is to create numbers and names that appear on the windscreen or the side windows. In this example, we can add a number to our windscreen by first selecting the number and then painting the alpha channel white. All white areas will be completely opaque while any black areas are completely transparent. Anything in between will be translucent. After ensuring the alpha channel is hidden, go to File, Save As, select DDS, and then change the name to match our original template but much like the region map, you will add the suffix of the individual part, in this case, windshield out. You can now add your files into R-Factor 2. You can do this one of two ways, either adding the loose files or creating a compressed and easily distributable mass file. With your mass tool, you can simply drag and drop the files in and be sure to save using the body name, in this example, alt 13 tnads We will now launch R-Factor 2 and browse to our installed vehicle, and then bring up the Customize menu. Click on the Create tab, and then click on the Create Skin directory, if one has not already been created. Note the directory path below, as you will need to navigate to this location inside a Windows folder to place your files. Once the files are placed, you can then click Refresh and select your alternate skin from the pull-down. Our white appears blue, because the original car file that we are applying our skin to has some material properties which are still active. We can simply go over to the Edit tab and adjust those material properties now. Simply click on the corresponding color and select a material. You can also adjust the color or tinting to that particular material. Notice that the colors on the pull-down menus correspond to the colors from our region map. Once you are satisfied with your material properties, you can now take your car out on track or send your files to a league admin for inclusion in a car pack.